Time to start the world's most expensive TTO1 build. Hey guys, welcome back to Tamiya Legends and once again thank you for stopping by. So this is the first actual video that I've made in 2020. Um, so I'm super excited to get going again. I've had a long break from it and um, the motivation's back to um, carry on. So I'm going to boot it off with this custom special. I've done videos of, of previous bits of this turning up so it's full carbon full alloy and it's got some more other trick bits going on it the shell is going to be customized as well um, it's cost a small fortune to get all these bits together um, but it's going to be a complete one-off which is important to me that's why I'm doing it so I'm super excited to get this done but this is going to be a very different build as you can imagine because it's not just a case of dragging the all the parts and pieces out getting the Tamiya instructions out and you know going one two three four in steps um, because the chassis is already pre-built so what I'll do is I'll um, a lot of you guys as I've been doing these videos on this project have wanted a bit more detail so I'm, I'm gonna try give you some more detail so the first step is to dig all the two diff parts out and um, get the two built get the two diffs built up um, and then get the um, custom diff housings that we've got um, because that's going to be the first process get the bit the diffs built up get in, get them in the housings and then get the diffs with the prop shaft and everything bolted down to this carbon chassis I have to say I have no idea from the start if this is going to um, all go together correctly or not because I've bought in my opinion what are the best parts from different manufacturers to build this one car so it is completely custom and a one-off um, so that sounds great but whether it's all going to go together properly we will see. So let's get cracking with the diffs. So as you can see, I've got all the front and rear diff parts out now. Um, it's very straightforward. Um, obviously the screws are a little bit, it's, a, it's an odd way of building a car because you're not following instructions. So I'm having to open the screw bags up and just take what I need and mix all the screws. Um, but it's gonna be like that throughout the whole build process. Um, because in the, in the manual itself, you build the rear diff first and you mount it to the car with the rear arms on and stuff way before, long before you touch the front diff. So anyway, I'm going to build these two diffs up because I've just had a look at the instructions um, and the arms go together as the gearbox housings close, which I didn't realise. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to take this step by step. So let's get these diffs built up. Right, a couple of things to point out. Uh, and I'm really winging this because there's not really one set of instructions to follow. So on the chassis, I've taken the top deck off, I've taken the steering off as well, just so it's loose. So we fitted a, a ball bearing in there. Now, the chassis housings, I thought they were same front and back, but they're not. So anyway, I've put um, bearings in, but these are different. And the difference is that length there, that's the front. I'll show you with the uh, and that's a rear so it's shorter so that was the first mistake I made so basically you put your prop shaft through like so spin through spur gear locate so that's that and then this chassis here that's this um, diff housing has got these raised lips which fit into this chassis as I say it's got a a ball bearing in there so you just sit it on the chassis like that and then that pushes and that's it so once that's bolted down there's no play in that whatsoever which is awesome I was kind of expecting that and there's no play in that spur gear either so that's really cool um, so that's how that section goes together obviously I've had to dig a lot of the alloy parts out Got to be careful of this because that slides forward and the pin slides out. So that's that bit done. But obviously I can't bolt anything down just yet because next stage is to fit the diffs. So I've put the bearings on either side and obviously we've got the bevel gear to go into inside. Um, but what I just before I do that, because obviously, uh, actually just while I'll show you as well, the flashing on these mould is terrible. Um, not so bad on that one you can't see it but I'm going to take this one back off and get a craft knife and make it all smooth but as you can tell basically that's how that one goes together you can see the gap in those housings that's because of the flashing on this one so we definitely need to get that sorted um, 
So yeah, I thought I would just better bang these gearboxes on, prop shaft in, and that'd be the first stage done. But obviously the arms go together, so I just need to, I need to dig the arms out next and just figure out before I go any further. So first stage, sort that flashing out, so that's gonna sit flush, um, and then figure out what goes in here, the pins and the arms, because I guess they're gonna have to go on at the same time. And then once that's in, we can get the Tamiya screws from the kit because I'll use those to um, bolt the gearbox housings up, um, which is four different screws. Um, but then I have to source some screws to bolt the four um, countersunk screws to hold the gearbox down. Um, so yeah, it's pretty involved, but um, let's, let's get cracking with that next stage. Well, what an absolute nightmare. Oh my word, I've had to fiddle with every part of this. Kind of expected it, but um, it's frustrating. So, the, the big issue I had was these arms. Uh, where can I show you? The pins that go through here, they have two plastic ends on either side that come with the alloy kit, and they've got to be tapped into these um, holes on the gearbox casings and I just couldn't get them in further enough, they were hard up. So I've had to make a little adjustment um, and actually tap them home further than they should be because it wasn't allowing me to seal the gearbox up. Um, and that took a while to get round, if I'm honest. So that was the first issue. Um, what else is there? So I've got the, the rear gearboxes mounted. I've, I've got had some similar countersunk Allen head screws. So that's, that's bolted down now and solid. Um, the diffs, oh, been, oh, before I show you that, next problem is um, when I'm building it this way around, if that um, prop shaft cup just comes forward that much, the pin drops out, um, as which what's happened, so the spur gear is now loose. Um, but I'm not, so to, in order to fix that, uh, I'll have to unbolt the motor mount, um, move it off, build that little assembly back up, um, and then put it together but it's pointless doing it now because it's fallen out so many times what I need to do is get the front assembly done and then obviously the prop shaft itself will hold it into place um, but yeah it's it's there uh, oops it's there uh, it's feels smooth enough to be honest um, everything's turning all that cup diffs all there really need to get the grease around it really but um, as you can see it's, it's it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, so that's set two problems. Third problem I've got is there's a brace that goes across here, um, an alloy brace, which sits round about there, which is obviously for your um, upper arm pins, because you've got one on the gearbox. Now the issue we have here is, um, just show you, if I put the top deck on how it, how it came, so the front sits on those two steering posts, like that, and then these two were bolted down to the motor mount. Now, that's like a perfect fit, as you can see across there. Oh, well, I'll tell a perfect fit, there's two mil showing at this end. But obviously it has to have this to hold the upper arms on. Um, and that is gonna be held by that. Bit awkward to show you on camera, but you so see oh, that that top deck's now raised quite a bit up, which is an issue. Um, but it's just something we'll have to look at when we come to that bit. Um, <laughs> it's fun, don't get me wrong, it's definitely fun, but um, it's a little bit more involved than I expected. Um, so, yeah, next thing to do now is to um, I'll have to get the front. Um, lower arms out. Um, where have I got that gearbox kit? These are the casings. Uh, I'll have to sort that flashing out again, um, like I did with the rear. Obviously, that's going to sit like that. Actually, I'm hoping that, um, yeah, it's going to sit like that. Just while we've got this, we can see if the uh, distances are correct. So that's going to sit like that. So, yeah, that's not too bad at all, actually. 
that I was a bit worried about that there's probably o-rings to go inside of that as well just to take the slack up but yeah you get the gist of that so that's what I'm gonna have to do now um, but again I'll do it off cramp camera so there's all the flashing to I'll just show you that look then you can see it hanging off the front all that flashing I need to cut off so we'll get that done um, and then we'll figure out what the front lower front arms are because we've got the same issue at the front with this bracket because obviously you get two of these and that's to sit that's to sit like that which is just going to um, be a massive issue on this front end as you can see so it's not a massive issue but I'll have to put some spacers in or something to get them to the same height it's like a jigsaw guys looks nice don't get me wrong but um, anyway I'll shut up let's um, let's try get this front gear assembly done Right, that's the front gearbox made up, and um, obviously because I knew more what I was doing this time round, it was a little bit quicker. But it's still the same issue, although it wasn't as bad with the pins that go through there. But um, if you can see, you can't really see that. See that silver. So what I've had to do is I've had to knock the pin all the way through the plastic sleeve. Now it's a mega tight fit anyway, so it's not an issue. It's not as if the pins are going to come out; they're absolutely solid. Um, but what that allows is the arms to be super free now on the um, back gearbox you know that's not really super free so um, I'm going to take the back off and get it to this stage again um, I have to take the back off anyway um, that one went together really well and it's all um, it's all flush and as I say nice and smooth bearings are in hold up cup it was a diff so I'll, uh, yeah so that feels good but as I say now I'm gonna whiz this rear back off um, and revisit it and knock those pins through just now I've got a better understanding of what I'm doing I'll get that done I'll get the rear to the same stage and then if all goes to plan I'll come back and we'll have because that should just yeah that just clips on um, and then obviously once I sort this um, spur gear pin out then I can have the drive shaft in place and I'll come back at that so let's get cracking right finally that is a bit of a mission guys I've got to tell you um, you've got to kind of work for it and make little ad adaptions here and there but anyway um, both gearboxes are bolted down the biggest issue I had was that split pin falling out of the spur gear because any movement on this um, of this cup and it just it fell out and the only, and obviously you, I the bevel gear then falls and I couldn't get it to push the prop shaft back through prop cup sorry so I, on three occasions I had to take the gearbox apart completely um, anyway I finally got it on um, but when I got the front gearbox on I noticed there was a lot of play not a lot but too much on the prop shaft so what I've done is before I've greased it up I've put a couple of o well an o-ring in either side and that's really hard it's, that's about, about a mil and a half um, and it just feels way smoother which is awesome I was a little bit concerned about that um, so I've greased I put the cups in um, and I've greased them up but they will fall out so I'll just grab hold of them um, what I have had to do those two rear screws are dome heads because I didn't have any countersunks now. You might not have noticed if I hadn't told you. Um, the what's the front? Oh yeah, the front I found some countersunk, so all those four are bolted down correctly. As I say, those back to a dome head, but they're not. So let's start down. They're not raised up as you can see. Um, right, let's get this back down so those cups don't fall out. Damn, what a thing. Um, they're a little bit freer, but they've got a little movement on them anyway, so I'm well chuffed with that. Um, but that has taken such a while to do. But the, that drive, that's the thing I was really worried about, but it wouldn't be smooth enough because it's a little bit sort of cobbled together, but um, it actually is. That just, yeah, feels great. And... Um, the diffs very free spinning which obviously you would expect but uh, it's always nice just to double check so what's next 
Now, uh, what I, what I plan to do is get all the top deck finished off and um, the steering back on. But obviously, to do that, we've got these brackets here, which, as I said, is front and back, which um, hold the top arm pivots on. So they're going to go like that. Um, and I don't want to put the top arms on just yet. I don't think I'll do it. Maybe that is the next job to put those, get the top arms sorted out, and then screw this and then figure out how I'm going to do that because obviously I have to put the steering on first the two wide ones are for the steering that's for those two brackets but as I say it is going to sit higher than it was because it's sat on the two pieces of alloy now um, which is no biggie it's no biggie for the motor mount because I can just put two spaces underneath that's not an issue what is an issue is this steering one um, again I'm going to have to find some spaces um, which is obviously not ideal but I haven't really got a way around that um, that I can think of right let's <laughs> let's get cracking right another shed load of messing around um, the, the, this was the biggest problem I've come across so far it sees alloy braces here you have one either side um, which um, holds the upper arm pivot rods on or whatever you call them um, now on the standard TTO1 chassis the it's a gearbox molding that's different um, and it's got like um, two raised sections and this alloy bit just sits flush and doesn't move it sort of clips in without a screw uh, and then you bolt it down but these are a different shape and what it was doing was when I was tightening them down it was pulling the the brackets that way towards the centre um, which was obviously lifting this up and then jamming the arms um, and it was also pushing the top deck down <laughs> so I've um, I really struggled with that but what I've eventually come up with and I, get, I know it's a bodge guys but I um, underneath this plate there's um, two like recesses in the alloy and it's just by luck, it's a perfect size for an O-ring, and the O-ring's um, thicker than the alloy in, in that section. So I just tried it, just to see what would happen, and um, screwed the front down, and it just stayed flush, and it's absolutely solid. So I'm like, okay, we've got around that. So I've done, I've done the same on the back, um, and before I did these two sections, and I just wanted to make sure that the top deck um, was flush with the main chassis which it was so then I was left with a problem as I said earlier on because originally this this top deck here was flush to there and onto the motor mount but because of these new gearboxes housings it's slightly higher now it has to be higher obviously because of these brackets but what I've done is obviously the these four are your main bolts which are quite long they're um, I think they're what the 15 mil long these these bolts and they go straight through the top deck, straight through the alloy, and really deep into those gearboxes. So that's great, that bolts that down. And then what I've done on the other two, for now, and this is only a bodge, but I, because I need to cut some proper spaces, but I've just put, I don't know if you can see that, some O-rings, a double O-ring on each one, um, which has done the job, to be honest. It's actually even tightened up, not fully tight, but, um, that's definitely something I'm going to have to come back to and get some proper spaces. If I could find some blue alloy spaces, which I know you can get, um, I, may, I may even have some. But um, yeah, I will have to come back to that. But what it's done is it's taken all the play away. Um, you can't really see it, can you? But the steering's all working and there's no play. Front arms, really slack. They're good. Um, rear arms, same. Everything's loose at the moment. So yeah, we're all good and the drivetrain is still good. God, that's been a mission, that has. Well, I've been at that most of today. Um I knew it wouldn't go together perfectly. I'm not naive enough to think that. But um yeah, there were some problems that I never envisaged. Mainly the heights of those gearboxes. But, you know, we've got round it. Don't get me wrong, this thing is looking superb. 
um, and everything's bolted down, everything's solid, everything's in place. But um, yeah, it's just a lot of work. I had hoped to get this full chassis build done on one video, um, but I just had a quick sort of look at the amount of time I've been on it, um, video wise. And I think it's up like 15, 16 minutes and it's really only half finished. So I don't want to do a big like 35, 40 minute video. So I'll, I'll break it into a part two next. Um, it looks, it looks superb, I've got to say. Um, that's all the drama's over with, luckily. Um, everything else is very straightforward now. It's just the rest of the alloy, the bumper, um, and whatever else is all obviously the uprights and UJs to fit and the wheels, the brake discs and all that good stuff. But the all the stuff I was concerned about, we've got through that in this video. So that's that's good news. Uh, I'm not keeping those there. I know they're very blingy, but um, I'll go with the black plastic ones so I can cut them down to length. Um, that's another issue or a worry I have right now is are these carbon shock towers going to be in the right place for the body holes? Um, I'm thinking they will, but I'm just hoping that's not going to be an issue. And when I get this thing finished and then I sit the shell on and the wheel arches are slightly out. Anyway, I'm 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 making my own problems there, which I, we might not have any. So as I say guys, I'll end it there, but it's um, it's definitely a thing of beauty, I've got to say that. So once again, thanks for watching, it's really appreciated. If you are new to this channel, if you could please consider liking and subscribing to support us. And if you do that, if you then smash the notification bell for our weekly videos, that'd be absolutely awesome. But as always guys, the most important thing of all is, happy assing.